Hi, and welcome to Voice with Julia's Technique Talks. I had the pleasure of sitting down with dramatic soprano Althalie Graham, whose career has spanned all over the world, including places like Edmonton Opera, Nashville Opera, Palacio de Bellas Artes in Malaga, in Napoli, singing roles such as Turandot, Aida, Lady Macbeth, and much of the other dramatic soprano repertoire. One of the things I think you're going to notice in our interview is how much Althalie stresses staying true to your technique, especially with the pressures of the outside world, um, different opinions on how a dramatic voice should sound and should operate. And she really stresses that it's so important that you know your own instrument and you know what you should be doing and shouldn't be doing. Um, and I hope that those who are watching that sing in the dramatic fach or are looking to expand into that repertoire, I hope you really listen to this interview and learn from her experience because she has such valuable information to share. So without further ado, I present Althalie Graham. Voice with Julia, I am just so thrilled to have you here on this show. Welcome, Awfully Graham. You Thank are you. A phenomenal dramatic soprano. Oh. And I just want to share with the audience a little anecdote about um, my family going to see you in Edmonton. Oh my God. It was Tour and Dot in what, a few years ago, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they just, they we were like, oh, this was fantastic. My grandma even cut out like a review and showed it to me. And it was like fantastic. It was, so that was my first, uh, my first knowledge of you. And that's, you know, I came into consciousness. Oh, that's so great. I wish I had known <laughs> they were there. I would have, you know, loved to see them backstage and hug. I'm such a hugger. I would hug everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd love to kind of start with a sort of more complicated question than what we might normally start with here on the show. And this is something about related to your repertoire. And you sing like basically all the major dramatic soprano roles that there are. Turandot, Lady Macbeth, Aida, you've sung Isolde, like all of these challenging, challenging roles. Now, can you tell me a little bit about what that takes in the technique to be able to navigate yourself throughout the length of the entire role? What, what helps you navigate that? Not singing at 95 miles per hour the entire night. I tend to focus you know, more on 55 miles an hour, with a few 95 moments, you know? Mm -hmm. And I also like my roles to remain youthful. Mm -hmm. Turned out especially, I mean, the Italian roles, you know, that's easy. It's, you know, it's built in. You know, Aida has, Aida for me always feels like Mozart. And, you know, with the Requiem, Verdi Requiem, that sort of thing. That always feels to me like it keeps me in top vocal shape because it demands so much mm -hmm. and vocally, technique wise and, and stamina wise vocally. Torondot is only, when you put her back to back, it's 20 minutes of singing. Yeah. So that for me is just well, this is like a little vacation. I mean, and I'm not saying it's easy, but it's short. And if you keep her youthful and beautiful, not only in, you know, not I'm not talking beauty and appearance, but beautiful vocally, there has to be moments, even in Questa Reggia, there has to still be moments of beauty. And it, for me, you know, especially when she's, you know, speaking of her ancestress, you know, there, there has to be moments still of beautiful singing. 
-hmm. And, and for me, I, I try to keep that in, in all of the roles and following what is written in the, in the music. There's a lot of piano moments, pianissimo moments, and, you know, big dramatic sopranos have pianissimi and, and we use it. Yeah. So I want to unpack that a little bit because mm -hmm. you talk about singing at 55% instead of that 95 that maybe you go into a couple times. What specifically is that? What, Not what does given. that mean? For me, I don't, I don't say 55 miles an hour. I, I think about it like I'm driving my car. And I don't mean that my foot isn't always on the gas. My foot is always on the gas or, you know, my, and I have a, a really big resonant instrument. Mm -hmm. So I don't have to give, I find, I find younger singers do this a lot too. Mm -hmm. I'm a dramatic, I'm going to give. And it's like, you give too much, you know, there's those, <laughs> they say that, you know, those, those uh, older divas are like, no, no, she give too much. So <laughs> it's, it's not necessary because if your voice is present and a resonant sound, I don't have to, uh, I have kalas all the time who, you know, turn their head like, Ooh, it's, you know, cause it's a lot of sound and it's a, a very concentrated, lean, high, uh, lasery with beauty sound. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I focus on never volume, mm -hmm. but on beauty. I don't mm -hmm. try to make a big sound. So while I'm singing, I'm thinking, okay, here we go. You know, in Questa Regia starts with, there's, there's nothing underneath you. One chord, you come in, beautiful, simple, there's no need to this, you know, it's early in the night. Come on now. <laughs> there, there's there. So when I, when I say that 55 miles an hour, my, my foot is still on the gas. Mm -hmm. My voice is engaged, but I'm not this. I save a few of those moments. And sometimes it's a, you know, quite a few moments, but <laughs> quite a few in some shows, but you know, I save that. There, there's no need for that because the people in the back, the people, you know, in, in the, the uh, stalls in the top, they can still hear me perfectly. And sometimes, as you know, as a singer, singers who, who um, give, the voice gets smaller. And I wish yeah. people understood that. Yeah. When you're this, yeah. your voice does you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. immediately, immediately. Right. That excess pressure, that tension takes away the cut of the overtones for sure. For sure. So what does the, when, when you give 95 miles per hour, like that miles per hour, <laughs> when you go there, does that feel like that's a volume? change is that a change in breath pressure what what is that it change in bowel change in no for me it's just a change in intent oh okay i i don't think about you know ferocity or but in the character you know i could give a little let's say volume i could give a little more a little more uh, depending on what the moment is, mm -hmm. if it's a, a, you know, grido moment or whatever it is, I'll give a little uh, to the sound, but not here, of course. Right. Um, but I, I'll feel like a little digging in in my body. And that's, and, and I don't do it. I find when I walk off stage, if I'm tired, What's tired, you know, sometimes my throat, oh, my voice is a little, I'm like, oh, what a night. But I'll find that my legs, mm -hmm. I have a very large lower half of my body, a larger lower half than my smaller upper half, proportionate to my figure. I find that my legs are tired. Mm 
mm -hmm. uh, more so than anything. And I know I've had colleagues or, or people say that they can see me, you know, pressing into the floor more for, you know, mm -hmm. bigger moments. Yeah. That reminds me of like Nielsen's quote, all I need to sing a Wagner opera is a good pair of shoes. <laughs> I mean, that's it. And it was, it, you, you, Nielsen is one of my favorite singers of all time. And, and yeah, I mean, truly that she sang and people don't know or who don't know the history of, of opera. She sang so many Aida's at the Met. Yeah. So beautifully, but the pitch and vowel are always exactly on point of where they're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, tack, 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 you know, do, 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 there it is. Mm -hmm. And and it's a very clean, high, lean sound. And in her Verdi Requiem, in her other repertoire, Aida, mm -hmm. she sings piani, pianissimi, exactly as you're supposed to do, and yet had what people consider a huge voice, but it wasn't huge this way. No. It's huge this way. And this way is the way that lets the people who are sitting outside hear you. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so let's talk more about this way. What is this way to you? What has happened with this way? Could we talk about that? Yeah, I, I know. People, what has happened? <laughs> when did this become a bad thing? This for all the Italian, mm -hmm. Italianate divas, all the, you know, if you watch some of the old videos, mm -hmm. I mean, everyone knew yes. that this yeah. is not it. Not it. I exactly. don't know what is wrong. How you can have you know, uh, Eva Turner, uh, Dorothy Kirsten, you know, people now when they turn on Dorothy Kirsten, they're like, oh my God. And I'm like, are you kidding? I, exactly. Who, who, right? who lied right. about her age <laughs> for so long and turned out to be, what is it, like seven years older and was still singing at the Met at 70 with easy high notes. And it's yeah. because she didn't do the, yeah. this that 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 I don't listen if it works for people fine yeah. but the I don't know when the that sound that these amazing singers made mm -hmm. if I do this everyone knows what I'm talking about mm -hmm. I'm not talking about over bright I, 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 I don't know when that became a bad thing. Yeah. And when yeah. everyone started to go more towards this pulled back, darkened, overly darkened sound. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of singers who have naturally dark instruments. Mm -hmm. I am not one of them. I have never had, and especially amongst African-American singers, a lot of them have this gorgeous, um, round, rich voice that is naturally inherent in their vocalism. Mm -hmm. So when I stand up, you know, I walk in and if you don't know me for, let's say, an, uh, I don't know, an audition or rehearsal or something, people immediately expect a certain thing. Mm -hmm. and then when I start singing it's like wait a second <laughs> that's that's not the sound we were anticipating but that is not my inherently natural sound and I was very fortunate uh that my first voice teacher Lois McDonnell very British uh school of singing Canadian British mm -hmm. uh recognized immediately my natural ease of production and didn't try to make something different brilliant which a lot of people <laughs> no longer do 
And I don't understand how that beautiful Bianca Scacciati, that that sound became the enemy. Yeah. You know, even when, if you listen to recordings, you know, Milo, all of them had that Mm -hmm. gorgeous and and her if you listen to her doing you know these things we hear on zoom you know all the singers are like yes yes because this is what we know to be true right (sighs) (laughs) so true i'm just just saying that Mm -hmm. you know if 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 your natural inherent instrument Mm -hmm. is that beautiful rich sound right Mm-hmm. I don't know when we started to manufacture and think it was better to to have that darker sound if that's not your natural sound. Right, right. I think that there's a, a very big misunderstanding, um, and especially now with you know everything being virtual, there's a big misunderstanding between voice size and voice color. Right. You're like, yep. My voice does not, is not one of those voices where you can say, let's set up a ring light in the living room. (laughs) And Authelie is going to now perform, you know, what? No, my (laughs) voice is not for that. Right. Right. If you would, you know, I, I just, and and the people who can do that and who have been doing it, mm-hmm. God bless you. Mm-hmm. I am not that voice. Yeah. My voice is the girl who's, you know, way up high on a platform and you're, <laughs> you bought, you're in the standing room seat and you're saying, wow, that I can hear, her. you know, that's what that is. Yeah. And I don't know. I have, I have a lot of, we know people mm-hmm. whose voices sound so big in rehearsal, in the rehearsal room. Mm-hmm. And when you move to the stage, oh, yeah. it's, and I, and what also should not happen is we shouldn't be trying to, pr- I'm, I'm going off on so many tangents, I'm sorry, but <laughs> we shouldn't be trying to prove how big your voice yeah. is. This isn't about who has the biggest mm-hmm. voice. This is about, for me, I don't think about, oh, this is, I have to be big. I'm f-. No, I want to ride on top of the orchestra, yes. on top. I don't want to go through the orchestra. No. I want to ride on, I want to sit on top. Yeah. And this does mm-hmm. that. This does not. Right. This does not go through the orchestra. This, however, goes right over it. Yeah. So true. So true. I'm so glad you're preaching about this. Well, because I, I, in addition to, let me not get off on the tangent about, you know, singers, you know, coming younger, very, very young, who have a phone in their hand and don't know, you know, even who Gwyneth Jones is or any of the, you know, I'm, I'm not even talking about, I'm not talking about uh, Ava Turner, uh, Eva Turner, or, you know, Scott Chaddy, or, yeah. you know, any of those, if you don't know, fine. But if your voice type is a dramatic soprano and you have a phone in YouTube, <laughs> which we did not have, um, you know, and you don't know at least and have listened. Yeah. Come on. It's it's unbelievable. And you know, I always say this to my clients. I'm like, if you don't have the right sound conception in your head, then there's gonna be a big problem. And you're right, so many people are not in their own minds trying to. Of course, we don't want to copy somebody else's complete voice, but if you don't have that right set of overtones in your head to match. If your voice is, I, I love, of course, 
Jesse Norman, Leontine, you know, all of the, the legends. Mm -hmm. But in, if I'm listening, you know, to, to, as I'm studying, aside from, you know, beginning study, I'm listening to recordings and, and before, you know, sitting at the piano or whatever, I'm listening to a voice that I can hear in my inner ear, that mm -hmm. my voice identifies, not that you're trying to copy Birgit, yeah. but you yep. must listen to someone or Dorothy Kirsten's mini, mm -hmm. a voice that your inner ear yes. recognizes. Yes. Because totally. if not, I'm, tr why am I listening, you know, to, to a voice that my voice will then become confused. Like, wait a minute, I want that, you know, creamy leontine thing. My voice, and then my voice starts to pretend, starts to copy. Yes. And it will make, you know, a, a, a disaster, because then my, my, for me, my voice gets confused that way. Mm -hmm. Other people- Mine too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, other people have no problem. I can yeah. listen for enjoyment, but if I'm leaving in however many days to sing Aida or, you know, whatever, I have mm -hmm. in my ear, Birgit's Aida playing. Yeah. So I can hear pitch, clean, yes. vowel, and sounds that my inner ear recognized for me yes. as being correct. Not for everyone else, no. but for me. No. And listen, there are people that do not like my voice, do not like my singing, do not <laughs> like my technique, and that's okay. Yeah. You can be the ripest, you know the saying, most perfect peach, not that I am. Some people just don't like peaches. They prefer right. apples, and yeah. that's okay. Yeah. Don't come, don't come to hear me. Do yeah. whatever you want, you know, uh, uh, say whatever you want. You know, there are critics who love you, critics who hate you, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I know what works yes. for me and what I need to hear in my inner ear to sing that, you know, Lady Macbeth pianissimo D flat right. at the end of the night. Exactly. And exactly. not only will I sing it, I will sing it and hold it and float it. And if you don't like it, <laughs> But this is so important. And I think with a dramatic voice, it's, it's a little bit more difficult because <laughs> can you tell me maybe a little bit about your, I, you said you had this wonderful first voice teacher. Did you have any difficulties along the way in your development? Things that, no, no that's so lucky. I didn't have difficulties until later. I. Okay was so lucky to find her she found me and god bless her <laughs> she knew first of all i was i was already older mm -hmm. and had audition for the university of toronto i was living in canada and i was a biology and science major at york university i wasn't mm -hmm. even you know i was singing yeah. singing you know, I had tried a few teachers, you know, mm -hmm. but the person, um, Derek Bampton, mm -hmm. my first coach at the time, very, very first, Rose Bampton's cousin. I was just talk about, ask, talk okay. about, yeah. talk about author <laughs> history. Yeah. And uh, she, he said, when I didn't get into the University of Toronto, you know, he said, you know, they don't, what are they going to do with you? And I was like, what do you mean? I could do, you know, scenes or, you know, and it wasn't even that I was a dramatic soprano. She, so he said, I'm going to invite someone. No, no, he didn't even tell me. I was having a, a coaching mm -hmm. and the doorbell rang and he said, oh, there's my guest. And I thought, oh my goodness, you know, I still have 30 minutes. <laughs> Who's here? <laughs> and in walks Lois McDonnell, who is a soprano that I loved and recognized, mm -hmm. of course. And I thought, oh my God. you know. <laughs> so I, he said, okay, we're going to keep singing. And then she got up and sang a little bit of, you know, what I was singing and did a, you know, a little bit of work with me. 
And she said, okay, I'm, I'm gonna teach you. And I really didn't have a teacher. So I said, okay, sure. And she didn't teach me. We did a lot of, by then I was already, I'm going to say 20, early 20s and 20. And we did a lot of um, songs, a lot of leader. Mm -hmm. But the biggest issue was that I couldn't read music. Oh, I okay. was not a music student. Right. So she would play for me and teach me, you know, like a, like a parrot. Yeah. She would sing. I would sing. She would sing. Yeah. I would sing. So yeah. if you talk about copying, I mean, basically I was copying her and the voice that I would right. hear and our voices are similar. So the voice that I would hear was always hers. And yeah. it was that same high, lean, mm -hmm. um, beer get British, yeah. even though beer is not British, but that right. sound. And that's the sound that I recognized. And she never said, and we never did, you know, we did some Marchese, we did, you know, but mm -hmm. what she did, because I was already older with no experience, I went from her basement to AVA. Awesome. I had never done, I mean, this is good and bad, but I had never done anything. Yeah. So, you know, I did like a little opera, you know, in someone's church. Mm -hmm. And that was the extent of my experience. So what she would do, instead of me learning all of these things that I would never end up using, she would cut uh, little fragments of arias. I must have sung the ascent to the high sea, you know, Patria Mia, yeah. more time. And I didn't even know the aria. I just awesome. knew the little things that she would cut out yeah. as my vocal leases, awesome. but they were parts of arias. Yeah. But she didn't yeah. want me to sing the whole aria. No. Just, you know, we're doing this section or we're doing this part. And, that and that's how we did it. And those sections of the arias that I would eventually sing got bigger and bigger. But she never said, I didn't know anything about, you know, dramatic soprano, mm -hmm. spinto, lyric. Yeah. You're just a soprano. Right. That's it. Yeah. And you felt like that, that probably helped because you weren't trying to I wasn't push your sound. Yeah. I didn't try to do anything other than sing with my instrument, mm -hmm. my color, as beautifully as possible. Yeah. You know, no louder than lovely. <laughs> no louder than lovely, exactly. <laughs> you know, You're right. I mean, but, ju but just basically singing what's on the page. Mm -hmm. And not, you know, trying to make something happen. Right, right. And you said when you, when you were a little bit older, you ran into difficulties. Was that because you were trying out new roles? What, what happened? Oh, I've had, I mean, there, there's always, you know, something always happens. Of course. I, and recently I had a few things happen. I, um, you know, I was such a, I had such a, you know, the, the resiliency of youth you know we when it, you know talking to to another colleague um a fantastic soprano Iglis Gutierrez my best best friend oh, yeah. my best friends forever um but she and I we were Wonderful. you know at AVA together oh I mean what a what a, what a talent Seriously. when we talk about I a, remember a unique, seeing her when I was 16. Sure you want to talk about a unique her. sound and a unique singer I mean right. and talk about what a blessing that no one tried to change her sound and her uniqueness because it would have ruined everything. But we were at AVA together. Mm -hmm. You know, it was her, talk about a class, her, myself, Latonya Moore. I mean, it was just, you know. So, but we, she and I would, you know, we'd do some competitions and we would get on the, you know, dollar bolt bus as poor and little starving students. 
and we would, I mean, warming up, forget it. You know, you do like a lip trill in the bolt bus bathroom and walk in and sit, and everything worked all right. the time, right. <laughs> all the time. There was never a, hmm, let me see how I'm going to, you know, make this ascent to the high C or let me see. No, it right. was you know, everything because you're young and your voice works and, yes. you know, you're drinking a Coca-Cola before you walk on or eating popcorn <laughs> and there's never an issue. And now it's like, okay, how did I sleep? Was the window open? <laughs> was the window open? You know, but, but as you, as your body change, you know, I also mm -hmm. had a very big weight loss mm -hmm. between, you know, I was almost 400 pounds when I got to AVA mm -hmm. and, uh, Eileen Farrell was one of the guests of the opera club right before she died. And, you know, I was a huge fan and I had her book, you know, with, uh, you know, I had the book and the CDs and I was there you know, in the front, just, you know, and I went up to her afterward and I said, oh, you know, could you please sign? She said, oh, are you a singer? She said, you're beautiful, but you're so fat. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> and I thought, and of course, you know, now with everything that's going on. Oh yeah. But I, and rightfully so, I mean, you can't, I mean, <laughs> You know, but it didn't dawn on me that, not that my, that I would have physical difficulty doing what I wanted to do mm -hmm. on stage. So, you know, I started losing weight and, and um, lost a, a ton naturally, mm -hmm. but then I sort of, you know, things were a little different. Yeah. And as I'm losing weight again, hopefully to finally make it to my goal weight and be where I want, where I, for myself, mm -hmm. I have to put that in there, yeah. want to be, you know, your body changes as you get older, your voice changes, roles change, yeah. you know, sometimes a little wear and tear on your, on your voice, things change. And that's when you start to be more conscious of your technique mm -hmm. and what needs to happen. It's funny because whenever someone has a really amazing performance, you want to recreate every, okay, so I did this and then I did this and I walked to the theater instead of taking a taxi. I ate this, so I need to eat that again. You know, people, I always hear people say, well, yesterday was so great and I need to do that again. And this is what I need to do, you know, to make that happen. But you, you do have to be more as you, as you go through your career, mm -hmm. things happen. And it's funny because we've all had things happen in performances. I, whenever they happen, I always think, oh my gosh, I'm the only one. But no, I, I have many colleagues where they've had, you know, major, you know, walk out and, and can't continue. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it's hard. It's hard. I've never had that, thank God, but it's heartbreaking. But, you know, we've all sung sick i've sung with e coli the these i didn't meet isolda with e coli because Good there was Lord. no one else yeah there was no one else but you learn you know things that you need to do and mm -hmm. and we've all sung with colds yeah you know but yeah. i became more technically aware yeah and i'm not a technique you know i've got colleagues who are like this is my you know Crick a thyroid in my butt. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm not that kind of singer, but mm -hmm. I definitely am more in tune with my body and with my technique. Mm -hmm. You know, the longer I, I keep singing because you have yes. to be. Yes. Does your, um, like now kind of knowing yourself and knowing your technique, do you have a system to set up your voice correctly? Like, or do you feel like your voice placement is always there? Or do you have to now find that every day? But how, how is that for you? Um, now I thought I just had to refine it the other day because during <laughs> this pandemic, you know, I haven't been singing as much as I should. Um, <laughs> 
but I find that um, if I'm singing a lot and I'm singing, especially in rehearsals and stuff, yeah. you're, my voice is usually, you know, in the right, in the right spot, right. which is here and here. Yeah. Um, but, and I find that it's okay. I wake, you know, but if, you know, things happen, if you had too much wine the night before, or if I have some reflux or, mm -hmm. you know, if I've had carbs and I know I shouldn't, because for me, it gives me, you know, plummy, yucky, horribles. Uh, or if it, for women, if we are menstruating or, you know, then I, I really, you know, so let's say I have a dress rehearsal Wednesday, mm -hmm. you know, on my now, uh, I have to remind myself, especially with something like Torondot or something like that. I don't have to sing every rehearsal. Why are you singing? Right. Bothley Graham. Mark, I, and I'm not a because I'm not a marker. I don't mark. Yeah, I'm not. I don't like it. I'm not good, and especially when the orchestra. So if I had rehearsal, even if it's tech, I had rehearsal. If I had rehearsal Monday, Tuesday, uh, dress Wednesday. You know how it is. Monday, Tuesday, oh, yeah. Wednesday. Yeah, I'll sing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. By Wednesday, you know you hear like, you know that little yeah. dirt and high oh, notes. Yeah. Oh. You know ah. Oh, because I sang too much. Right. Stop singing. You know the opera. The conductor knows you. Yeah. Don't sing. And that that is that's a lesson that I have to learn. And especially with new roles. And I had a I had a lot of difficulty with that with Lady Macbeth because it was a new role. It's not my favorite kind of role to sing with the you know. Uh, ugh. And, but I love her and I really yeah. need to do it again. But it was under very awful circumstances. My mother was just diagnosed with cancer while I was there. Yeah. And because she was so new and because I loved her so much and I was singing with Mark Rucker, who is like, mm -hmm. you know, you dream to sing with him. Mm -hmm. And I had done Aida with him and I was so excited. But so all of these things, and I, I oversang a lot, mm -hmm. you know, cried in my dressing room a lot, talking to my mother, making plans of, you know, talking to oncologists, all these things. And you end up, you know, singing too much. Yeah. And when I was younger and I would, and I would always be, especially in my repertoire, I was always the youngest in the cast, yeah. the most inexperienced, especially and the youngest. Mm -hmm. And I would see these singers, mark, 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 marking, 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 marking. And I'm like, ha, huh, I'm not gonna mark. I'm <laughs> gonna sing. And I would sing and sing and sing and sing and sing and sing. Yeah. And I had a colleague say to me, God bless him. <laughs> you know, you're not getting paid for today. <laughs> And you don't have to prove anything. Yeah. So if you sang Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or let's yeah. say Friday, or Thursday dress, opens Saturday, your voice yeah. needs time. Yes. Whereas I didn't need as much rest before. Mm -hmm. Whew. I will take that rest now, believe it or not. I, you know, because, yeah. you know, we're smarter and we know yeah. these two little things and your body, my body, especially if it's a yeah. physical role, your body yeah. needs to rest. Yeah, absolutely. So talk to me a little bit about your idea about support, uh, breathing support and or anything that helps you feel that you can sustain your whole, your, your voice, your, the musical line. And the reason why I'm leaving that open-ended is because I don't. Because I, you I see the look on my face and you know, I know nothing. No, <laughs> you're like, I'm like, what? God. <laughs> no, I, I'm leaving that open-ended because I, I'm trying to get at something that in order to sustain these incredibly difficult lines that you have to do over an entire evening, um, 
you know, some people want to default to, oh, okay, that's support. But I really want to unpack what that actually means. Maybe that's not support for you. Maybe you don't think of it like that. Maybe it's something else. So I just kind of want to look at the aspects of your technique that you feel you have either now or at one point had to sort of intellectualize to optimize, if that makes sense. I find for me, I don't think of it as supporting my voice. I like to come in, you know, breathe before, and come in right on the note, not scooping up, not all that stuff. But I always thought of high placement, low support. That was always my mantra. Mm -hmm. High placed, low support. I always took a good, um, and I also notice a lot, and it's been pointed out to me that I'm a big nasal breather and if you hear recordings you can hear me and I think okay well I mean it works you know but for me that I don't that's what I I don't think of supporting my voice I think about taking a breath a good low breath, of course, not, mm-hmm. you know, we all know, we all know that. Well, we don't all know, but we should. <laughs> we do see this. And, and I, I've, I'm, I, some, I've done it myself where I'm, yeah. you know, about to sing and I, yeah. and I make that face. I'm coming in, you know, and I, I've had, you know, a coach pointed out like, what do you, what are you, doing? I don't, but I, I think for me, when I breathe, through my nose as rudimentary as it is it immediately goes to the place I want it to go and I don't think about some of these concepts that I've heard about pushing out or filling up my intercostals or my back or my I I don't understand that personally for me Whatever you need to do with your student to make them, you know, people leaning against pianos or, you know, whatever works for you, great. For me, if I am nervous, I'm always nervous. If I'm nervous, then I can get a high clenched breath. Mm-hmm. So I do, you know, the, the, my favorite that I just discovered a couple of years ago is the alternate nasal breathing. Love it. Where have you been all my life? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, and you will see me backstage mm-hmm. because I find it calms me down. Yeah. And I don't mean calm, like, oh my God, I'm so scared. But my adrenaline, yeah. you know, I want to get on stage and I love these Great. people and, I want, so it, it sort of calms me down, but it also calms my breath, yes. keeps my stomach, you know, pliable. Some people love to be corseted and have something to lean against. I'm not one of those people. Okay. Um, I like to just let my, you know, stomach and guts hang out. Mm-hmm. I don't pull it up mm-hmm. the way some people do. I see, you know, Birgit always had that thing too, you know, which would always, and she'd do that, you know, breath, you know, thing. Um, I don't do that. But for me, I never had an issue. I don't, I don't expend extra air. Yeah. I also don't take huge, crazy, wide breaths. I take just a regular breath. Mm -hmm. And I have built that into the muscle memory. Now I have had things happen where I'm, you know, excited and I'm on stage and I'm running around and it's like, 
and and I do a dramatic as I'm in the character where I've taken a breath with my mouth open where I'm and then what comes out afterwards is not always what you want to hear because you know that totally and then you try to sing on that Mm -hmm. and it's that dry thing that got you know so so for me I don't think of support I don't know if it's because we've been singing for so long I don't think of and I I haven't had to explain it to anyone Mm -hmm. yet but I don't think of it the way I have heard other people explain it you know it's so so true as I'm listening to you talk about this it's like when the tone is right when there's not excess tension in, in the throat then the body will call forth the support that it needs for the note without having to manipulate it. That's it. I, 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 and I understand that, and I have, again, colleagues who are very technical singers and I'm just not that. Yeah. You know, I, I believe still, I mean, yes, I've had, if someone explains, if I have a problem, as we've all gotten into trouble, as we've said, if something has happened, you know, I've, I've been on stage in a Torondot, everything's sailing along fine. And all of a sudden I've gone to sing the Grido, grido, and it's like, (laughs) (laughs) and I'll go, oh, and then, of course, I will hold every single high note after that even longer to, sh- you know. Yeah. But I mean, things happen. We are. Yeah. I'm not a yeah. machine. Things happen. No. I will say that things happen to everyone. Mm-hmm. But I do know that there are some people who are forgiven for those things more than others. And that I find heartbreaking. Mm-hmm. You know, we all have baubles and foibles and, and, you know, there are some people who are forgiven for those baubles and foibles mm-hmm. and allowed to do things on stage that, will, that we've both seen that are shocking. Yeah. And where you think, you know, where people have completely you know, had a vocal crisis yeah. and have been able to, you know, continue on like with their career and had yeah. crises after crises, whereas other people will have one bobble yeah. and have been written off. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that that happens more in a dramatic fog? Do you think that the stakes are a little higher? I think that that I think that, I don't know if it's just a dramatic fuck because it's happened to a lot of, you know, people. I mean, there are tenors who, you know, things happen. I mean, natural things happen. Whereas other tenors have had to, or or sopranos, have had to work twice as hard to get half as far. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, you, we've been on stage and you go, okay, well, I had a, you know, a few, and people are less forgiving. Mm -hmm. And, and I I think that a lot of people don't understand how difficult it is truly Mm -hmm. to be a singer. You know, these, these singers will sit in the audience, you know, who are still in school. Yeah. And they don't know what it is to be on that stage, title character or not, and to to have a career, a career, not to sing, you know, Asia, but a career. Things happen. You know, Lois said to me when I was younger, life happens while you're singing. And so many things have happened to so many colleagues Mm -hmm. you know 
deaths and births and Mm -hmm. and and all of that you know affects your vocalism you know things happen and it affects your you know colleagues going through you know chemo and and still singing and you know it's uh it's and I've always had so much compassion Mm -hmm. for my colleagues even the ones who have been really difficult because I find that they're difficult out of the business sometimes makes you difficult. Mm-hmm. Um, difficult. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but also out of out of, you know, fear and out of wanting to to do your best. Yeah. So I've I never I, I'm I've never, I just let people do, you know, do their own thing. I've been in some pretty harrowing situations with colleagues mm-hmm. and, and in, in good ways too. I mean, but, but, you know, we're, we're, and I, and I, I just go and sit down in the room. <laughs> so I'll let you all figure that out. I'm just going to go and sit down and uh, <laughs> you let me know when you're ready. <laughs> <laughs> but you know but but Birkett was right in terms of of singing you know once you've done the wood shedding and the work mm-hmm. you need a good comfortable pair of shoes and you know hope that you sleep the night before and hope things work exactly. out exactly yeah I'd love you to tell me kind of as a, as a little gift to the audience a little ender I'd love you to tell me about um you know, you mentioned this beautiful pianissimo high D that occurs in Lady Macbeth, okay? It's a difficult, everybody waits for it. And how do you approach that? What are some tips you have for that? Pray a lot. No, <laughs> I, for me, for my own vocalism, again, the high lean sound, I have always, and this was Lois and then continued you know, mm-hmm. with, with Bill Schumann, my voice teacher and my coach, Jeffrey Miller, mm-hmm. I have always on my own vocalized the way you would expect a higher coloratura soprano to vocalize. I've always done, you know, bah, 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 high staccati, mm-hmm. high, 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 high. I'm all, sometimes, you know, by the time I get to the E flats, I'm, you know, 10 cents short, but you know, I'm still always stretching my voice for that note. I didn't read when it, when that role was offered to me, I, of course I knew the opera, but I didn't realize all of the things, you know, Mm -hmm. um, I knew by then that I could sing piano, I could sing pianissimo. And when I went to, I did Aida in Italy with Marcello Giordani. Mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, Fantastic. Yeah. What, what a loss, my God, what a voice, yeah. what a man, his wife, mm-hmm. you know, incredible people. And I was scared out of my <laughs> wits. I mean, truly out of my yeah. wits. It was outdoors in one of those Greek mm-hmm. amphitheaters, scared out of my wits, because here I am in Italy. All of those people in the audience could sing my role and everyone else's role. Yeah. In their sleep, yeah. have heard it, <laughs> done it. You know, so, so there's a different expectation. It's not like, oh, mm-hmm. look, she got all the notes. Yay. Right. No, 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 no. No. <laughs> <laughs> and my coach, I remember when we were working, you know, I'd already sung it by then, but he said, listen, if you are not going to sing pianissimo, piano, for your voice, not, yeah. you know, Caballé's piano or any, you know, if you aren't going to do that, don't get on the plane <laughs> because those Italians, forget it. Yeah. And, you know, I, I really worked on it. So I knew that I had the ability to sing Mm-hmm. a different color mm-hmm. a different volume 
because I do it in, in other repertoire. But that Lady Macbeth, for me, I have to do as Birgit did and would do. I have to, to come in on it mm -hmm. for me. I can't carry any, I have to make sure I, nobody wants to carry any weight to high notes. I have to make sure I'm not carrying any weight. I have to just come in right on it. And even before it, I have a little lift before it because I know what's coming. And I come in right on it and walk off stage. And, you know, and in, in my mind, I'm thinking, I'm not thinking pianissimo, I'm thinking shimmer, 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 so that I have that, you know, shimmery, floaty, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's like the end of, of uh, the Liebestod, you know, you, you, I'm not yes. thinking, you know, that's when like the stars and the moon and the whatever align and it all comes together. Yes. But I find it's easier at the end of the night or after a lot of singing mm -hmm. to sing, you know, in that floaty, mm -hmm. pretty, but I don't try to make, you know, you get what you get. Right. <laughs> on that night, you know, and sometimes <laughs> the stars and the moon align and you, you get yeah. floaty, beautiful end of the Liebestod, sometimes not so much, <laughs> but you know, but it, but I, I always, in my brain and in my inner ear, hear what I want mm -hmm. first. Yes. And I know, and then, and, and usually some reasonable facsimile, <laughs> some reasonable, you know, it works. Right. I, I find it hard to, to, it's more difficult for me to just show up and do that. Yeah. You know, if someone said, oh, we'd like you to do, you know, just sing that, you know, I'd have to warm up forever you know, to yeah. make sure that, you know, everything's pliable. That's, mm -hmm. for me, I like to just keep my voice high yeah. and pliable, like yeah. always stretching the yeah. elastic. Again, even if, you know, in my very first Aida, I, you know, young and stupid, thought I had to prove something. And I was singing the E flat in the trample scene all the time. I did it in, I think it was Texas, you know, in a company there, my first or second Aida, I think. And, I, oh, and, and, you know, there was one of those opera queen bloggers that, that I love who know, oh, Othely Graham sang the E flat in the trample. I'm like, oh, yay, yeah. someone knew. But even if now my E flat is, you know, five cents short of a quite e, of a you know really in key e flat i'm still going to stretch mm -hmm. to an e natural yes so that my d flat or c sharp or whatever you mm -hmm. want to call it is is always stretched yeah. and for me the only way to continue to do that as we continue through the business and yeah. you know get older and and stuff is to keep doing high lean yes. staccati in my in my vocalises and carrying no weight, no weight and not trying to make a sound or a big yes. sound you know whenever yes. I read all these things you know people posting oh my gosh her voice is so big I don't hear that I I cannot tell you how many times I've said to someone you know, can, can you get someone to stand in the back to make sure they can hear me? And they're like, what? Are you, are you joking? No, because I don't hear that. Right. I don't hear my voice at all. I have, yeah. I feel it, but I yeah. don't hear it. Yeah. And that's yeah. better. Yeah. Yeah. As you know. Oh yeah, of course. With our similar that's production. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's scary to trust though, right? That, that trust thing is a huge mental leap. It is a huge mental leap. And, and again, it's, you get to the point where some people are going to love your voice and some people just aren't. Mm -hmm. And that was hard 
for me, you know, I'm, I love people. So I'm, I'm everyone who knows me knows, Oh, she's so bright. She's so loving. But I, that's hard. That is hard, you know, for someone to go, you know, for a conductor to go to your performance and say, Oh my gosh, it was terrible. She was awful or, or whatever. And, Oh no, we're not going to use her. And then, you know, maybe to tell other people that you weren't good, you know, that, that's hard, but that has nothing to do with you. Yeah. It's you do the best you can on that day right. under those circumstances, whatever they are. Yep. And the people who love your instrument and you and your mm -hmm. everything will love it. And the people who don't, yep. you know, right. there's a reason that, you know, people, I always find these little pirate clips of awfully high notes, you know, and, and it's always someone who's <laughs> way in the back up here somewhere looking down, you know, not the most flattering, but you know, there, my voice is not built for that, for, for the, you know, salon series in someone's home. Right. <laughs> you know, it can be, I mean, I certainly, you know, can do, you know, a, a leader night evening abend you know something like that of course yeah. but you know there's there's but you don't but no one should go into this especially singers who say oh, i'm a dramatic soprano how do you know that <laughs> uh, really because i didn't know that yeah. you know i i just tried to keep my voice as italianate mm -hmm as possible and to me that means a pitch vowel combination you know that my red that my registration yeah. understands yeah that's I it I love that yeah I mean yours might not understand mine mine might not understand whatever but but again in listening mm -hmm. I have to tell you a really fast story there was a singer that I was singing with young very very young <laughs> Not that we're old, but you know, young. He was young, very young, green and young. And I said, <laughs> I I mentioned to him that he sounded so much like Tom Krause, who I worship and loved, mm -hmm. and got to work on Sibelius songs with. I said, Oh my God, your voice! And he said, Who? <laughs> And it took everything in me not to throttle, <laughs> like, because, you know, you have to listen to singers from the past yeah. and listen to singers live. Oh, yes. Yes. I mean, and, and when I hear people criticizing I mean, I, there are singers, of course, that I don't like vocally what they do, but I don't criticize someone's bad performance. I put up a post on Facebook a while, a long time ago that keeps coming up in my memories where I say, I don't go and, you know, oh, how so-and-so in rehearsal, how did so-and-so, oh, did you hear about that energy yeah. always comes back in your career or lack thereof yeah. because of it but I give so much grace to other singers whether you like me or you don't like me I don't care but <laughs> I give so much grace because to stand on stage and do this mm -hmm. and to sustain it and to yeah. keep doing it and to keep fighting for the career yeah takes so much that i'll i'll offer you grace just because you're doing it yeah i love that that's so beautiful I need more singers like you <laughs> no well i mean look i'm not saying you know i'm certainly not perfect and i'm not saying that but i i don't do that. I just, 
And, and I know people who do, who, you know, we all do know people, but I just, when someone has a bad night or something happens and everyone's, oh my gosh, did you hear? And famous singers, did you hear <laughs> so-and-so cracked and sang an octave below? I don't care. My God, you know, just the fact yeah. that you're still doing it. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. You know, yeah. I love that. Yeah. It's so I, true. I, I, it's so true. And, and that energy mm -hmm. that people have been on a feeding frenzy you know, like, like a, like a room full of mice and you throw in one piece of cheese <laughs> and they all, you know, yes. I am hungry mm -hmm. and I love cheese <laughs> and I will work to get it. Mm -hmm. I will, yes, fight for it, mm -hmm. but I will offer all the other mice grace for whatever because i i just don't want that we can't have that negative heavy and 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 you know the the business you know it's show business still right i mean you know opera is still show business yep for better yep. or worse <laughs> that is true <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you so much. This has been so fantastic having you here. I, I have so many takeaways that I can't wait to share um, about this interview. It's just brilliant. And I love your philosophy. I love your person. I love your singing. So thank, thank you. you so much. Oh, thank you for here. asking me to do it. I, I, you know, when you're a not, I mean, I, I have no all these people with, you know, doctorates and undergrad music. I didn't go to school for music. <laughs> you know, I, I, I went, you know, again, from my teacher's basement and I auditioned for AVA, got in and went and whatever happens, uh, you know, so I, I never had that technical mm -hmm. thing where I like had students and I was teaching and getting my master's and my, you know, bubble. No, I just sang and, and, you know, did what I knew worked for me. Yeah. That's it. You know, and, and, but when you get into trouble, you need, you know, a, a hand that can, can guide you in the right direction. And, and that's, you know, that's the most important thing. Yeah. Yeah. And important to know yourself so well that you know that that direction is right for you. Yeah. And that, that goes along with the same thing that we said about listening to things that make your ear flash green mm -hmm. instead of flashing red. Like, oh, right. I, don't under I don't understand that. So whatever sound you know is your, you know, your inner ear sound, totally. you know, that's, that's what you go with. Yes. And, and there's nothing, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, I, I had a friend say the other day, um, you know, I listen to, to one small takeaway. I listen to study recordings. That's how I learn my roles. Mm -hmm. I have someone, I'm not a pianist. I, I sit down with my score, mark, you know, do the translating, mark in all my beats, all that kind of stuff. But long story short, I then have, you know, a repetitor or someone make a mm -hmm. study recording of my notes yeah. so I can learn everything accurately. Yeah. Someone said, oh, you should never tell anyone that. I said, what are you, what, yeah. you know, come on. No one cares yeah. how you learn it. They care that when you show up and that also goes along with listening that, yeah. you know, the same thing that you listen to things mm -hmm. that are accurate, musically, it's language, all this stuff. Yes, yeah. of course, but that are accurate for your voice. Yeah. And yeah. If, if your voice is not, you can listen for enjoyment, but if you're studying, you know, and listening, you pick the right thing. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> totally. We, we know how that goes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
how many times did I try to sound like Renee and it just didn't work out? Oh, That's I mean, you know, me <laughs> listening to Leontine and hoping that suddenly this, you know, creamy, rich gorgeousness will suddenly, you know, I mean, your my voice is, is my own beautiful instrument. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mine. And, you yeah. know, those who love it, love it. And those who don't. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, thank you so much. I'm gonna thank you. I'm gonna just be posting and, and sharing all of our takeaways. So everybody Oh my can gosh. See it. There's I'll so many. Share the, I Can't I don't wait. know. I'm I'm wondering if there's anything of value, but okay. Lots. Lots. <laughs> <laughs> well, so nice to see you. And so nice to see you finally. I know. And looking know. forward to our singing together. I mean, I think happen. that we look, I think that we look like sisters, Electra, Absolutely. don't you? Absolutely. I think so. I, th I think so. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I, there, yeah, there are so many things that we can do, but Torrent out in view, I mean, we would be yeah. so. Absolutely. In, we'll do it, you know, in a production somewhere or in a concert version somewhere. I think, I think yeah. there'll be a lot of concert versions of things coming, coming up. up. Oh, yes. Given Absolutely. the, you know, the pandemic. Absolutely yeah well thank you so much thank it's you sweetie <laughs> thank you <laughs>